Once again, here with George Tulsa and Gene LaRue Lures in Tulsa. George, tell me, what are the signature lures of the Gene LaRue line? Well, there are several different ones. The number one, probably the one that made the company famous a long time ago, was the Gene LaRue Salt Crawl. This was the original salt crawl that Gene LaRue made, uh, started the company with. This was the first one that ever come out with any salt in it. If you go anywhere and find a crawl worm, people will refer to it as a salt crawl because this was the first one. And it's still a huge selling lure through the company and it still catches a lot of fish. So that's something that, that was probably the biggest thing for the company ever was a salt crawl. And how long has that one been around? Oh, that was one of the first lures that Gene LaRue did back in the early 70s. And then it just got bigger. The next one that, that really got it, after I took over the company, actually the first year that I had the company, I designed this lure for Daryl Robertson. And he won the uh, FLW Championship on Fort Gibson Lake in Oklahoma. And this is called the Who Daddy. He had the prototype, I built it for him on a Monday. We took it to him and he, first fish he caught with it was a five pounder. And he pretty much dominated the entire tournament. I mean, he blew everybody away and every single fish he caught was on this. Well, that gave this a big boost. When I design a lure, I've always got a million things behind it. Why I want it to work good or why it's working, you know. And I come up with a new thing. The reason this thing works so good is because it's so soft. I put big rings on it and the rings did several things to it. It pushed a lot of vibration out into the water. It, it pulled the fish in from a long ways off. When a fish got it's full of salt, for one thing, and when a fish got a hold of this, it felt so real to him, it was so soft. The first day that we fished with this lure, he had 15 bites that day, and we saw every single fish that he had on it. They would not turn loose of it. One of the biggest fish he caught in the tournament on this lure, the hook was turned backwards and was not even hooked. He dipped it in, it, did not even, it didn't even have the hook in it. The biggest thing right now out for us is the Biffle Bug. This is a name, Tommy Biffle is a namesake for this bug because he's made it famous. I mean, he has won tournament after tournament on it. It is so easy to fish. It's so versatile. We come out with a new way of fishing on the Biffle Hardhead, which is a free swinging hook on a football head. And we figured out that by just reeling this across the bottom and make it tick on the bottom, the actual football head, as you're reeling it, it's bouncing off a of rock. It's swipping, and, the, and this bug, every time this comes through the water, it's just whipping back and forth and darting and it's putting off so much vibration and so much thump on the bottom that the fish are just eating it. When I designed the bait, we made sure we had rings going down both sides. We wanted it flat. And then it also has a cup tail, which we have a patent on having a cup tail in your bait right there. And the cup tail does several things because it not only keeps your bait moving in the water, the tail, so that you're getting more action all the time, but it gives this thing a gliding action. Now, one of the main keys to this lure are the legs that's on this. An average hook tail, like a lizard or a worm that has a hook tail type on it, it takes at least six miles an hour to make that turn. These legs on this turn at two miles an hour in the water, which means if you put this on an eight ounce jig head, which with this much plastic is not gonna make it fall very slow, those legs will kick the entire way to the bottom. It takes nothing to make it work. I'm gonna show you now how to rig this biffle bug on the hard head. This is an owner hook and it has a heavy wire and it's got this deep J-bend. When you're reeling it and you're hitting rocks, it pulls your bait down if it doesn't have it. So we're going to go in the center and right back out, which is about two rings on here. So you can see it's not hanging very far, not in there very far. I'm going to push it up and set it right in that, in that J-bend right there. Now, see how that's hanging right here? In that thing, you can pull on this and it will not come down the hook. It'll stay right up there, and that's a real and keep important part. If we had a 90 degree angle bend, that'll just slide right on down, it balls up, and it causes you to hang up on everything. Not like that. The next way, next thing to do is look at the bottom of your hook right here. See where that's at. And if you mark where the bottom of the hook meets your bug, and what I do is take my thumb and put it right there. Now that tells you exactly where to put the hook through the lure. And the key is, is make sure that it hangs real straight. Now see how the hook is laying right in the groove right here? So it can hook up. If you want to make it weedless, just push up on it and pinch, pinch a little bit of that plastic, put it, cover the tip of your hook right here. Still hanging perfectly straight. The tip of your hook is covered. If a fish bites it, he'll grab it right here. That pops loose. The hook's out there where you can get him. It'll just set the hook yourself. It has a full rattle chamber in it, just like a tube. 
So if you put a full size tube rattle in it, it's got that echo chamber so it's really loud. That was another big deal of this. Now when we're fishing it on this hard head, we're gonna be reeling it fast. Those legs are gonna be kicking, it's gonna be whipping back and forth, the tail's moving. And it reeling across the water like that, it was probably the most realistic crawdad motion coming across the bottom, stirring up dirt, stirring up dust like a crawdad does. Okay, George, so we've seen how to rig the biffle bug. Tell me, how does it work and how, and how do you fish it? The good thing about this is this is probably the easiest way to fish a lure that you have ever fished. If you're a little kid and you got a Zebco 33 or something and you can cast, you can fish this and you can catch just as many fish as your dad. It's a simple, simple way to fish. Cast the lure out, let it go to the bottom, and just start reeling it. Don't stop. So what you want to watch whenever you are reeling it, keep your lure going, is you just want it ticking the bottom. Just reel it fast enough, and you cannot reel this too fast to get it away from the fish. The, fi the faster it is, the more reaction straight you're gonna get, the better it's gonna be. So you use a heavy enough head that you can keep it on bottom, you can reel it fast, and you watch your rod tip. If your rod tip is dragging and pulling out and it's hanging and then the net does it again, you're reeling too slow. That's simple. All you wanna see is your rod tip just thumping. Just, just little thumps like that as it's hitting. That's all you want. Say you pulled up to a point and you, you, you did a Carolina rig or you did a Texas rig lure out there and maybe you caught one or two off that point and you thought, man, that was a good spot. You can throw this out there and pull it and maybe catch 20 off of it. It makes that much difference. That sounds like an easy way to go. Man. It is, it's simple. You do, there's no making a mistake on it. Just reel it. Right. The mistake is if you stop it. Don't stop it and you will not get nearly as many bites if you try to stop the lure. Keep it coming, don't ever stop it. Well, here it is from the man, the biffle bug on the biffle hardhead. You keep it reeling. No brainer, that's the kind of fishing I can do.